All right, what's up guys? We're gonna try this one more again. Sunday Artist Spotlight. Today's special guest is celebrity publicist and author, Crystal Jordan. She's based out of Atlanta and she has worked with many, many dynamic cli clients, um, including our beloved Chili from TLC and many others. I've known Crystal for quite some time now. So it is exciting to connect with her and talk to her about her new book. Okay, can you see me? I cannot see you, but I hear you. So, That's so strange. I can see let's you. Give it to God. <laughs> I know. I can see you. I can hear you and see you, but you can't see me. That's so weird. So weird. I hate that that's happening, but hopefully our followers are seeing you. So let's just move forward and have faith that things are going to work out. How okay. are you today? I'm good. I'm good. Happy Sunday to you. Likewise, likewise, Queen. I'm honored and excited to talk to you. So let's not drag this out any further. I've known you for well over a decade now as a celebrity publicist, and you've connected me to some amazing clients, and I just love watching you from afar do your thing. But you have now turned author, sis. You put out a new book, <laughs> How to Win When Shit Happens. <laughs> let's talk about it. Guys, do you hear her? Do you see her now? I think I lost her. Let's see. This is there. So weird. Bam, there it is now. I see you and I hear you. Cool. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> All right, finally. Third time's the charm. Yes, third time's the charm. <laughs> So, Crystal, introduce yourself to everybody. I kind of gave you a light introduction, but I would rather you go ahead and, and tell us who you are, and then we can get to the book. Okay. Well, I am, and I am, I've been a writer forever. I think most publicists are writers. Um, so I, I started out as a writer when I was very young, and then I went into PR in college. I did actually did journalist, uh, broad, broadcast journalism for a while. Then I went, hey, uh, some of the TLC fans have joined. Then I went into PR, and I did corporate PR, moved to Atlanta, Georgia, started doing celebrity PR. So that's kind of how a lot of people know me is from doing celebrity PR. But I always was a writer. I had a book that came out in 2006. Okay. Um, that was because I did PR for Barnes & Noble, and I was just like, you know, I'm writing for I'm, – I'm doing all this organizing for other authors, and I've got books on my shelf. So I, um, I had a book that came out then – Went through some family issues and took a break from writing and focused totally on publicity. That did very well. But writing, like I said, has always been my first love. So I got back to writing a few years ago. One of my mentors was like, you have to start writing again. So I started doing articles. I do a lot yes. of stuff now, as most people know. Um, but then this pandemic hit and I started feeling a lot of anxiety like everybody else. And I decided to kind of channel all the things that I had learned from all these amazing, successful celebrity people I was around and put them in a book and even, you know, basically give voice to some of the things that I've been able to do to change my own life. And so that's yeah. what I did. And that's where this came from. I love it. I love it. And guys, for the record, we are doing a giveaway. Crystal is so generous that she is providing one of you guys with a copy of her book. So make sure after this interview, you head over to thebobbypin.com and enter to win. So tell us what we can find in there. I love your rollout. See, that's the advantage <laughs> you have as your own publicist. Like you went live daily with other people. Um, you've been sharing some of the affirmations. So yes. tell us a little bit about what we can expect inside how to win hey. when shit happens. <laughs> I did. I did. the. I just decided that's the thing. This has all been really organic. I have not applied the publicity. Most people know it's kind of hard to take your own advice. Yeah. So I, <laughs> um, for this, but I really, this is really therapeutic for myself. And so I wanted to share with people, the book is $4.99 on Kindle, $9.99 um, to actually buy it because I didn't want it. It doesn't have me on it. I wanted this to really be something that could help people during this time because I heard everybody I talked to was stressed out yeah. and I wanted people to know that really the only thing that separates winners 
from losers is a mindset. It's not your skin color. It's not your family background. It's not where you were born. It's nothing. It's nothing else except the way you look at life, right? Mm -hmm. and, and the beautiful thing about that is that you can change your outlook on life at any time. At any time, you can change and become someone who's a very positive person, who is dedicated to um, being successful and encouraged. You can change who you are at any time with the with with consistency, right? Yeah. So this book, that's that's what this book is based on. It's thirty one affirmations to build mental immunity in the midst of chaos. And I really, really, but like I said, I've been blessed to be around some of the world's most successful people. Um, from the entertainment world, and also I work in finance also, so I see it from both sides. And the, and the difference is those people see themselves as winners. And you have to learn how to see yourself that way. If you weren't born that way, which I was not, I can be honest, I was born, you know, and I've always wanted to help other people, but I never really applied those same principles back to myself. And so after a while of doing so much for other people and blowing other people up, I started saying, wow, why am I not doing that for myself? For myself yeah. I didn't see myself as a winner, right? And so you have to really, you have to really program your mind. But like I said, the beautiful thing is everybody can do this. You just have to be consistent and you have to be dedicated to it and you have to be ready. Yes. Speaking of consistency, you've given us 31, 31 30. affirmations. So that's one for every day of the month. Mm -hmm. And I see that you also partnered up with DJ Mark Battle. Yes. To produce this. So talk to me yeah. about that partnership. Yeah, that, you know what? Again, I was sitting at home and I believe I've been blessed to be um, able to work in music a lot. Right. And I believe that the most the two most powerful things in this world are words and music. Right. If you're having a bad day and you put on a motivational song, it's going to make you it's going to lift your spirits. In the same token, if you put on a sad song, it's going to bring you down. Mm -hmm. And so I called uh, DJ Mark Battle, who's a friend of mine, and I said, hey, I want to do this book. I'm working on these affirmations, but I need you to do the same thing that the affirmations are doing with music so that yes. people can the music and stay uplifted. Because it's not enough just to do your affirmations in the morning. All day, you have to stay connected to that energy, right? So he actually created this 45-minute playlist, and the playlist has music, and it also has like audio from people like Tony Roberts, um, uh, Iyanla, who I love, Oprah yeah. Winfrey, Sarah Jakes, all these Diddy, <laughs> all these different people. And it's totally free. The playlist is absolutely free. And you can listen to that just to keep yourself connected to that winner's mindset. And I think that's equally important as putting the words in your spirit. Absolutely. I, I love that component, girl. You know, being a music writer, an entertainment journalist, like music is everything. So I definitely agree that they go hand in hand. And it's just a nice compliment. As I'm reading the book, I can listen to the playlist and like you said, make it a lifestyle. Yeah, you can use it. I'm, I listen to the playlist if I'm working out, when I'm walking in, um, in my neighborhood with my dog or even like in your car on your way to work or on your way to the office. It's important to stay plugged in. And I think that's one of the things I didn't do early on. I would read something motivational or say affirmations. And then later on during the day, I would go through something. And instead of taking myself back to that, I would wallow in that. Mm -hmm. It's important to stay connected. Recharge your brain just like you recharge your phone. So you come back to your affirmations, put that music on, make your own motivational playlist. That's another thing we encourage people to make their own. But DJ Mark Battles is there on the website and it's absolutely free for you to download. And it's, it's so inspirational. He did a great job. Yes, go check it out, you guys. How to win when shit happens .com. She made it real easy for you. <laughs> <laughs> and again, of course, we're doing a giveaway. Now, Crystal, I really want to dig into your career. I think, like you said, it's very amazing. And I honestly didn't know that you did have a background in broadcast um, journalism because I remember when I first saw you start writing with Rolling Out and then doing your reality check series, I'm like, she is so good. Like, she's a natural. But that kind of makes sense. So you did have experience with it and you are coming back perhaps to your first love. I don't know. Talk to me about that. Yeah, you know what? That's that's another another example. I started in college. I actually I did I had a show in high school. That's how long wow. ago. I had a TV show in high school that my best friend was the producer for. I also did one in college that she produced as well. We went to we went to college together. 
Um, and I got married and had kids in, 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 in college. So I thought to myself, I had two kids by 25 and I was married. I was a wife with, with, and mother of two at 25. And I said, you know what, I, this is not for me. I don't think that broadcast journalism, I felt like, you know, I gained weight with my pregnancies and I just felt, hey, Tehran. Yes. <laughs> hey, Tehran. Like, <laughs> huge inspiration of mine. He's so inspirational. Um, but I didn't think that I could do broadcast journalism then. And so I let it go. And you know, if you let something go at 25, especially broadcast journalism, which is something that's very aesthetically driven, I never expected to have an opportunity to do it again, ever. I, I just gave it up. I was like, you know what? I had kids, I did that, and maybe that's not for me. And I, I really did like PR, and I focused on that. Um, and then I started doing these things called a PR minute. Mm -hmm. And it basically just, my, I just saw so many people that were really confused about celebrity PR. Still are, but hey. Hello, you know, they need you now. <laughs> so I, little celebrity PR minutes, and I put it on YouTube, and not many people saw that. But one of my, my mentors, who actually is the publisher rolling out, he saw it, and that what, that's what opened the door for me to do. He asked me to do reality check. But that was from me just, I wasn't even trying to do that. I just was like, I'm tired of people getting celebrity publicists mixed up with publisher and manager and I don't know, so many other things, it just irritated me. And so I started doing it and I enjoyed it. And 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 that's, your blessing always comes while you're doing work. It never yes. comes like trying to get people to pay attention to you. It was just me doing the work. And so he came and asked me to do that. And then I started doing reality check and then Fox 5 in Atlanta called and said, hey, would you do a segment on our show? And it was like, wow, that's amazing. Like 20 years after I let it go, it came back. And I think everything that is for you will not miss you. Come on. You moving forward, right? And that's what it showed me. So people are like, how do you get that opportunity to be on Fox after, you know, at this point in your life? And I'm like, I just kept doing the work and God, those dreams never die. So you just have to keep moving forward. Yes. Delay does not mean de denial. That's what I get from that. Oh, I love it, girl. I love it. I love it. Um, so I don't know if you want to tell us a couple of affirmations that we could expect in the book, maybe a few that really stick with you. Yes. I mean, there's, there's so many. I actually, um, one of my, one of my really good friends, um, well, I'll, I'll say this. I, I've referenced one of my really good friends in the book. Um, but a personal situation. But I also have had the opportunity to be around Polo, um, super producer Polo to Don. Yes, yes. He always, he always, anyone, anyone that's around him, when, you, when you're around people that are successful and they're driven still, like I mentioned with Tehran, Tehran is someone that has had numerous hits and just, just success after success, but he still works like he's, like he's hungry for it, right? Mm -hmm. so, successful people they all have that mentality they're still hungry and Paul is one of those people that even though he's successful if you're around him he's constantly asked do you want to be great or not like are you trying mm. to be great right and so we talk a lot about Kobe Bryant and the idea of people that are sold out on greatness and most people just are not so they eight affirmation is one of my favorites it is I strive for greatness and achieve it I do not fear the journey because I know it's preparing me for my end goal. If you are working hard and doing what you're supposed to do, you're not supposed to fear hard work. There's so many young people that don't want to work. They want to go on Instagram and put up something and have people come after them. And that's not how it works. You have to work hard and know that if you do the work, those seeds will always come into fruition. And just saying that is a way of, of building your faith. So you know you're not working in vain. You're never working in vain. So that's one of my favorite ones. And this chapter actually talks about Kobe Bryant a lot. Um, it has a quote from Kobe Bryant, which says, if you want to be great at something, there's a choice you have to make. What I mean is there are inherent sacrifices that come along with that. Family time, hanging out with friends, being a great friend, being a great son, nephew, whatever the case may be, those things may have to be sacrificed at times. And so that's just, to me, it's just like, reinforcement you have to put in the time if you want to get the reward there's no yes. short to it, right you cannot beat the hard work so another one of my favorite uh, affirmations is unconditional love starts within me and flows freely from me and back to me and the reason that that one is important because i think love is a basic need that we all have 
And so many people think that they need to find love externally, but the reality is love is inside of us. And if we don't realize that and we're chasing it externally, we're never going to get it. So we have to believe that we have love and love is already there. And we have to allow ourselves to feel that. And then it's going to come back to us because I don't want people to think that success is only monetary, right? Mm -hmm. Is a full balance of love, family, friends, career, all of that. And I think everybody can have all of that. Now you may have to work at different things at different times, <laughs> you know, yeah. I believe it really is, you create your definition of success and don't let someone else create it for you. Period. I love that. And I live by that. I've actually been putting that into practice as well. I've had to reconsider what success is to me um, because you can be in the same industry in the same field as someone and not want the same end goal. So yeah. it's very important to not compare yourself or live by anybody mm -hmm. else's standards, but yours. And the yeah. key though is to have high standards to set your standards high. That's what I heard from you. <laughs> well, it's definitely take your standards high. And it's also not to be afraid. Like you have to be, you cannot be afraid to dream. Some people are afraid. And I, I, that's, I'll read number two is I'm worthy of all my dreams and desires. Some people dream small or th aim small because they really don't believe they can attain the highest thing. But when you start to believe in yourself, then you know, I can set my standards for something that is above my wildest dreams and aspirations because I know I do have, I do deserve it. I'm worthy of that. And that's where most, most of us are not successful because we don't truly believe that we're worthy of it. Mm. And once you change that, you change, you change the entire game. I'm telling you, from Tehran to Ray to Polo to different, different celebrities that I've been around, they all believe they are worthy of everything that comes their way. And so that happens. When you don't believe you're worthy, that's a self-fulfilling idea mm -hmm. that you create. You know? So you have to get to your, you have to create a mindset that says, I am amazing, I am love, I am success, I am all these things, I'm willing to do the work, and I promise you it will happen. Yes, in the words of Mama D, I deserve. <laughs> I deserve. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, I love Mama D, absolutely. <laughs> I had to, I had to do that. <laughs> Crystal, okay, let's see, let's have a little bit of fun. Tell me about one of your most embarrassing moments as a celebrity publicist. So something goes wrong or you left, I don't know. What's, what's one embarrassing moment? <laughs> I mean, you know, that it's, it's funny because really a lot of times you are, I'm not going to necessarily say lying, but you are creating stories that are more that are um, able to be digested publicly a little bit better. They're a little easier to digest for public consumption, right? See, listen to her way with words, you guys. I love it. <laughs> you gotta know. Easier to digest. You have to, you know, be able to tell a story in a way that people are able to accept it, and it's not going to damage your client's image in a negative way, right? So I've had clients you know, on the way to a media junket, end up getting arrested, you know? Um, <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. The junket, like, okay, I've got to say, and, and it just doesn't make sense to share with MTV that the client was arrested, right? That, that, that would not be what you would want to do. Um, so you have to find a way to do that. I think, I think the, I don't, it's hard to give individual examples because you don't want to put anyone else's business out. Yeah. I will say this. When I first started doing PR, hey Vlad, I first started doing PR in Atlanta. I was and I, I'm a, on a large level. I was working with TLC, and Chili had a huge press run for her show, What Chili Wants, that was on VH1. Mm -hmm. And I did not take the time. A lot of times, I was just so overwhelmed, you know, trying to because I had a very small staff at that time. It was just myself and two other people. So I would be on the road with her and then other people would be handling the accounts that were here. And I didn't always have the time to make sure that I was straight because I was so busy making sure she was straight. So I've looked back at some of those pictures and I look a hot mess. And I had to learn how, today I didn't because it's Sunday and I'm kind of chilling, but I had to learn how to make sure that I was straight along with my client because I was so used to putting the air, the oxygen over other people's masks, face. You gotta put yours on first to myself and so I know we were at VH1 honors on the red carpet and I had like my makeup had sweated out you know I had my natural hair it, it just a hot just a hot mess a hot mess <laughs> and I had to learn 
learned that people don't really, you know, in this business, people really don't care about your work ethic. Yes, I always did a great job, but I was on the red carpet looking at a hot mess. And so I had to learn how to really take care of myself first and then take care of the clients. And so that was a hard lesson to learn. And I'm, you know, hey, I look at those pictures sometime on, on, on uh, wire images and I'm like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> But sometimes I just didn't, I just did not have the time. I was also raising kids by myself. I just didn't yeah. have, the time. Um, or I didn't take the time. I didn't make the time to look out for myself. So that was a hard lesson to learn in a public setting. I love that you share that because I feel like I noticed that a lot in our space where, like you said, we're, we're caregivers in a lot of ways. We got to make sure that everybody else is okay. But mm -hmm. what good is it if you're not? presenting yourself and your work in the best light. So I definitely understand that it's not about vanity as much as it's just making sure you're on point all the way around. <laughs> Actually, with that situation, I had a, I did a photo shoot with Chili and this, this choreographer that was on set that was like helping the designer, he, he was talking to someone outside and he said, wow, that she doesn't look like she would be Chili's publicist. I would expect Chili's publicist to look different, right? And I was like, wow, because I was very, you know, I didn't have makeup on, my hair was pulled back. I wasn't dressed in designer clothes because at that time I was just really, you know, getting started. And I really, I had, I'm trying to raise kids. I'm not in designer clothes all the time. Priorities were different. Yeah. And they still are. But I mean, you know, in this business, people can hurt your feelings. I remember, I remember my feelings were hurt for a second. But the ironic thing, that same guy that talked so badly about me, Somebody came to me and asked me, did I, did I have an, uh, did I know a choreographer that needed, needed a job? And I recommended him and I called him on the phone and I told him, I said, I know what you said about me and I heard you, but I'm not going to hold that against you. I hope you get this opportunity. I set you up for it. And I, and, and I think he didn't know what to say, but that wasn't really for him. That was really for me because I, I had freed you. thick skin and to always support us as much as I can and I wanted to show him that sometimes the people that you think the least of because you're judging them on things that are important are the people that can help you the most so it really wasn't you know people like why would you give him an opportunity it had nothing to do with him it was all about me and me showing myself this is what's important this is my character and this will continue to be my character regardless but I had to step it up and start taking care of Crystal as well that's beautiful. And girl, you be slaying it. I'm so mad we didn't get a Kentucky Derby look this year. Oh um. my God. <laughs> <laughs> That's my love. My favorite, my absolute piece is, is horses and that the Kentucky Derby is my favorite event to go to. So there is a polo classic um, that I support here in Atlanta with Miguel Wilson that I'm going to go to, um, God willing. And if we can make sure social distancing stays in place. Um, just to be around horses and do that. But I think everybody needs something that is their way to disconnect that gives them peace. You have to have that. And, and you have to find what's good for you. So everybody doesn't love, you know, horses like I do. Somebody else may love. I don't know. Everybody has their thing. But find something that makes you feel happy and peaceful that has nothing to do with money. And you should do that. So many gems you dropped, Crystal. Um, please, guys, go support How to Win When Shit Happens. Visit the yeah. website, howtowinwhenshithappens.com. It's available on amazon.com. And we're doing a giveaway right after this at thebobbypin.com. So make sure you go enter to win your free copy. Crystal, is there anything else people need to know? No, I just want everybody to know that during this time, you know, you, you yes, we hear there's so much going on. But your reality does not have to be affected by the pandemic, by the racial unrest. Don't get caught up in what you hear in the news and think that is your future, right? Because God has already ordained. I'm not a pastor or a preacher, but whatever is for you is going to happen. And you cannot allow what you, the noise that you hear from with, uh, around you to, 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 to throw you off track. I just want to encourage people. Yes, we all are going through hard times, but that does not mean that your destiny is not awaiting you. So don't think that it's a wrap because 2020 is going this way. That's not the truth. You just have to train your brain to stay focused on your goals, stay focused on your destiny because that is uniquely yours. Just because something happens to somebody else, 
does not mean that's going to happen to you. You can have empathy for them, but you keep moving forward. You keep focused, just like those horses that are racing. You keep focused on your goals, and you can and you can attain them. I love it. Positivity right here, live and direct. Instagram Live, Bobby Pins Artist Spotlight, bringing you up close and personal with today's creators. Thank you so much for sharing with me today, Crystal. I am so empowered and moved. And I thank cannot wait to dig into my copy of How to Win When Shit Happens. So thank you again. Well, thank you for having me. And I'm really proud of you. I've, I've watched you grow and you are like just you're taking boss. Boss chick is taking over and I love it. So keep going. I'm definitely going to continue to support you. Um, but I just want you to know I'm proud of your growth. I've seen I've, we've been for a long time. You were really <laughs> a long time, like from the beginning. So I, that really means a lot to hear you say that. And I'm watching queens like you paved the way. So. Thank you know, you. I'm just following the footsteps of where you're, you're leading me. So thank you. <laughs> we got to hold each other up. As women, we got to hold each other up. As, as, as African Americans, period, we have to hold each other up. So we have to keep doing that. But you guys stay encouraged and just stay plugged in, man. Stay plugged in to something positive. Turn off Instagram if you have to. Turn off Facebook. Turn off Twitter. Do what you have to do to keep yourself in a great place. I, I do want to say that i talked to several therapists and affirmations are a key thing to maintaining mental health. And so stress, anxiety, depression, those things are all things that we have the tools to fight. And one of the ways that you can do that is with affirmations. So I just encourage everybody to find those things that uplift and empower them and make them a part of your daily practice. Absolutely, guys. So thank you until next time. Peace. You guys, later. <laughs>